As we're talking about these exponential equations and how to solve them, a question that might follow up is what does the graph or picture of solutions look like for these exponential equations? For our exponential graphs, we're really looking at plugging in values for the x to build our graph. And as we do that, if we're doing the exponential function y equals some base to the x, a couple key points will appear on every single one of these graphs. There will be a point at 0, 1, because when the exponent is 0, the answer is 1. And also, there'll be a point at 1, b, because when the exponent is 1, the answer is b. And then the shape of the graph comes in really shallow at first but once it breaks and starts to grow, it's going to grow really fast. And so most of our exponential graphs are going to look something like this. Now, depending on the function, it might flip or rotate a certain direction, but that's the general idea. So let's look at some examples. Let's graph y equals 2 to the x by making a table of values for x and y. Now, it's usually good to try a few negative values, maybe negative 2 and negative 1. 0 is always interesting. And then let's also do 1 and 2. Plugging these values in for our x, we'll end up with 2 to the negative 2 power, which is 1 over 2 squared because of the negative exponent, or 1 fourth. Plugging in negative 1, we get 2 to the negative 1 power. And that negative exponent becomes 1 over 2 to the first. So we just have 1 half. Plugging in 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. So 2 to the 0 power equals 1, writing out our work. Plugging in 1, 2 to the first power equals 2. And plugging in 2, 2 to the second power equals 4. And so if I wanted to draw a picture of these solutions, a graph of what we just developed, we need to go at least to a height of 4. And we went back to and forward to. And so we can plot these points. At negative 2 on the x, we go 1 fourth on the y. At negative 1 on the x, we go 1 half on the y. At 0 on the x, we go to 1. At 1 on the x, we go to 2. And at 2 on the x, we go to 4. And if we connect those dots, we see it starts shallow. But once it bends and breaks up, it's going to start to take off and grow really fast. And that gives us our graph of our exponential y equals 2 to the x. We can even make these graphs a little more interesting. We could do maybe y equals 10 times 1 half to the x. And we can make our table of values with x's and y's. And we can try maybe a negative 1, a 0, a positive 1. Let's also try 2. Those numbers are kind of flexible, but we want to make sure we get the break in the graph and see how it's bending. When we plug negative 1 into this graph, we get 10 times 1 half to the negative 1. Well, 1 half to the negative 1 flips it over, giving us 10 times 2, which is 20. When we plug 0 in, we get 10 times 1 half to the 0. But that 1 half to the 0 is 1, so it's really 10 times 1 equals 10. When we plug in 1, we get 10 times 1 half to the first power, which is just half of 10, or 5. And if we plug in 2, we get 10 times 1 half squared. And squaring, we know the power of a quotient rule. We square both, getting 1 fourth. And 1 fourth of 10 is 2.5. So let's see if we can make a graph of the solution points. We tried negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. But it went up pretty high to 20, so we might have to count by 5s. 5, 10, 15, and 20. So when x was negative 1, the y jumped all the way up to 20. When x was 0, y jumped up to 10. When x was 1, the y jumped up to 5. And when x was 2, we jumped up to 2.5. And so you can see we got the big break on the left this time. 
and leveling out on the right. And that's our graph of the exponential equation. If that's what the graph of exponential equations looks like, I wonder what the graph of logarithmic equations looks like. That's going to be the topic of our next video.